What is going on everybody? Back with another video, an actual drawing video this time. I know a lot of you have subscribed to me, and not because of my knives or my car, it's uh, because of my artwork. Uh, I haven't put out a drawing video in a long time, and I happen to be getting back into my artwork a little bit uh, these past uh, few weeks. So I thought I'd post this um, video about the process of how I go about uh, drawing. Now, everybody has different techniques. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I don't really think there's a right and a wrong way. And, you know, a technique is just an opinion of how to, uh, you know, how to go about things. So, I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make uh, uh, basically a video montage of, uh, of um, like, a progression shots of a drawing I've been doing recently uh, from start to finish. And I'll explain the steps as I go. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys will get something out of this. Um, and uh, if you like these kind of videos, just let me know, and I'll continue to make these in the future. All right. So, uh, so to start off, uh, I usually uh, start with an outline here. I don't know if you guys can see my uh, mouse pointer here. So this one's a very, very like um, light page line. So from that point on, once I roughen the, the the basic shape. I start. I found. I look for a starting point. Usually, my starting points are going to be the eyes and the head of anything I draw. That's that's basically an animal or human. Um, so I rough in the. Uh, again, I do the same procedure. I just go ahead and rough in uh, the uh, eye and uh, the lid, the little bit of the nose and the mouth to give it the basic shape. Now, remember, when you're drawing, you want to take your time. You don't ever want to rush things. Just because it, it, what happens is a lot of people when they see uh, uh, like a massively detailed drawing, uh, they, they they take on too much. Don't take on a lot. Just take on a little bit at a time. What I do is I, I start taking in some pencil. And I start roughing in um, all the details. Now I'm starting to go back in here and taking uh, darker and darker pencils and then kind of carving out more details of this eye right here. Remember, see, I'm not focused on anything out here at all. It's all just in one area. Uh, so what I do, uh, primarily this drawing, I used a H pencil, which is a hard pencil. Uh, then something slightly darker, which is an HB, which is a, your basic number two pencil. And a 6B, which is a, a very, very soft lead, so it's very dark. Uh, it crumbles easily onto the page. Yeah. And what I've done is uh, uh, I, I basically uh, start off with an H pencil, kind of shaded in a little bit of it. And then I, I just very, very lightly uh, I got, got uh, more and more of the eye in there. I, I, I didn't make it smooth because I, I wanted the eye to have a little bit of texture to it, you know. Uh, so I, I basically just did a little small little like kind of spirograph circles like this all the way around and then kind of kept on doubling over it until I got the desired effect. Uh, I left a little bit of uh, a light area here for the shine. So here, this horrible photo, I'm sorry, but uh, but what I've, what I've done is uh, I've actually started to, to block in some of the other details out here where all the shadows and everything are. Later on, I'll go back in with a blending stump and smooth, and, or smooth everything out. Now, you guys can use a blending stump or you guys can use like a, uh, you know, nice, uh, you know, tissue. You know, bathroom and then, you notice how in the mouth here, let me go back one photo. Uh, oops, wrong way. Uh, you notice on the mouth, I, I actually drew a little bit of how where the shadow is. And then basically on the next step, I just darken the shadow. Now what this does is it creates a little bit of depth and makes it look like the beak or the or the mouth. The, 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 the overbite here is um, overshadowing uh, the lower uh, the lower uh, jaw. Yeah. So, and so you notice how, how the contrast between the, um, between the light areas and the dark areas really pop out the lid. And of course the, the eye is uh, all darkened so, here. I start into the next area where I just start drawing in some of the scales, and what I did is I roughed in the scales, and and you'll notice I'll say the same thing over and over again now because basically I'm just I'm just uh, doing the same couple steps that I that I done that I have done for the last uh, few photos. I'd rough in the overall shape. I get a I get a, a a very light pencil like an H pencil or an HB, lightly work in the details, and then darken it up as I go, and then uh, and then uh, work it over. If I need a smoother smooth smoother blend, I'll blend it in with a blending stump. Um, if not, then I'll leave it uh, textured, which I'll be showing you later on. So here we are. I'm just starting to rough in uh, all the uh, rough in. I'm starting to color in all the uh, all the scales here. You notice how I don't, I don't exactly make them completely dark. I leave some spot. I darken some spots more than others. Right here and right here, and this is lighter. It kind of gives it a little bit more contrast and um, and a little bit more depth. You know, it doesn't make it seem like it's a flat, you know, one-dimensional, you know, object. And same thing with these. And so now, immediately in the strong, I've already prepared for the light to be coming from the top. So that's why the top part of the turtle here is a little bit lighter. 
because the, as the light shining down through the water kind of uh, kind of uh, makes it a little hazy, kind of a uh, brighter, you know. And then of course when your eye will focus toward down here, everything's a little bit darker. See all that. So and I also I didn't smooth it out completely too because I wanted more of a texturing on the on the uh, on the uh, uh, scales as well. And uh, again, uh, when you're drawing, it's mainly just a trick of the mind. You're tricking your eyes to, to think that there, that this is uh, more three dimensional than it really is. But realistically, it's just a line. So basically, I, did, I would draw a line here, and then I'd come in and darken this bit a little bit more, and now fade it out a little bit. So it makes it really heavy back back down here in some of the other scales. Down here, I basically colored it in a little bit more, added more graphite to the paper, so it makes it more shadowed. And actually, on the next photo, I think uh, you'll be able to see more of that shadowing here. So you notice I darkened this up a, a lot to give it that that under, you know, shadow because the light is coming from the top. Now here on the neck, I basically just just I basically squ squiggled a bunch of lines in there, uh, very very quick, very very rough, you know, because uh, and I basically colored in selected parts of the uh, of the fold. The darker parts kind of makes it seem like this the folds deeper, you know, on the neck, and uh, I basically followed the same uh, uh, principle as I did with the chin and also the scales up here as well. So again, remember to start off slow. And, you, and here's a good example of it down here in the opposite side. Darking, I started to make some of these parts darker. And you can tell this is much lighter, this is much darker. And of course I darkened in some more scales. And you can tell, once you get all dark, uh, add some more tones. And the more and more overlapping tones you add to it, and more and, and some, some of these parts actually blend it through with a blending stump. It gives it that, it pops it all out. And that's what's very important for if you want to go for that, that ultra realistic style kind of drawing. So obviously as a child you guys I'm sure have done come coloring books and then your parents all have told you hey color it within the lines that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm basically drawing all my all my scales individually you can see a little bit here I'm drawing drawing them light uh, roughing them in and I'm coloring within the lines leaving these open areas which later on I'll come in with a blending stump such as here I'll, I'll, I'll put like a light blend here that kind of offsets so it doesn't look like it's perfectly white in between the scales which doesn't look natural you know and in a natural setting these these um, these individual scales also give off their own individual tones now you notice I'm varying my tones in between uh, in between the scales too so over here on the edge of the fin is much lighter than some of the some of the uh, scales here in the middle and uh, it'll become very uh, more and more apparent as I move on here uh, so I decided to add like a big group of um, or actually it's a small group here but it gets larger as I go along uh, of uh, a cleaner fish so I just overlapped it onto the shell I didn't want to put it right at the edge of the shell because then it doesn't seem like the fish are on the shell it just seems like a two-dimensional um, drawing so I overlapped some fish over here and over here cover up part of the shell so it makes it a little bit more 3D. So notice I, I started doing the underbelly here, and also I started drawing in the or roughing in the shapes of the uh, 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 the top shell here of the lines, and uh, I, I I basically added tone into the middle part here, and uh, and here's some of the more fold other folds of the skin that goes into the underbelly, and again following the same techniques I've outlined here, I basically just roughened the details, darkened and darkened and darkened, and then made made darker lines where I wanted like a more of a bold you know, a uh, crease and, uh, you know, more depth. Um, I basically just um, made a very light shadow, kind of place where I wanted the tones. And then uh, I went and darkened it up a little bit more with an HB. And then finally the edges, I added a little bit of the 6B pencil uh, into it. And I did that with that one. And of course, you see, I'm starting the next one over here. So right now, you notice I haven't touched the fish at all. I haven't done any of the rendering because you don't want to jump around too much on your photo, on your uh, drawing. You want to again just take it one step at a time, so you don't get overwhelm yourself. I think that's the biggest uh, problem is people overwhelm themselves when they're drawing a lot uh, of detail. So again, I applied everything around here, and notice I, I left the I left the fish untouched. There you go. Here's the finished completed turtle here. All right. So now after this is completed, I go. I went ahead and went on to the next step which is the fish. Uh, again, same thing. I, I applied a light tone just to, to get, up, get get where I want the want the tone of the fish to go to. Do I want it, if you make it too dark or the same tone as the background, then of course they'll uh, blend in. Um, so, and I also did did lines that 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 would um, that would uh, contradict the lines that are on the shell. So 
So on the shell, we have little small miniature little, little speckles and dots. On the fish, I decided to go for a more smoother uh, line to it and then put a small bit of grain wherever shadow is, which I'll show you in a little bit. And you notice how now the fish are taking a little bit better shape, you know? Uh, I got Now it looks like the fish are a little more scaly here, and then it looks like it has more radiating uh, fins. And also, I, I left a, a, a good light tones and, and darken it up, darken the uh, bottom of the belly up to denote that the light's coming from the top. Now, in order to create these white spots here, it's very, very simple. All you do is you darken everything around it, and the and the uh, lighter spots become brighter and brighter. I mean, again, it's a simple trick of the mind, you know. So if you left all this all all this stuff uh, bright white, then obviously it looks like the entire fish is overblown and white. The more you darken down here, the whiter and brighter it gets up here. So here's the so. finished version of the fish of the of the cleaner fish along with the turtle. You know, so you can pretty much clearly see most of the fish that's around the around the uh, turtle here. Right now it's very easy to read because there's no background. When I start putting the background in, um, it's going to be really busy. So let's go and jump into it. So this is the lower left hand corner of the page. The, the, the turtle's up here somewhere along with the fish. And I started some, making some little weird geometric shapes, um, organic, actually more organic shapes uh, for the corals. And uh, I'm going to skip through here really quickly. And uh, again, I roughed in some, some, some you know, uh, little squiggly lines and I colored in uh, where I think of this like this really dark uh, kind of like overhang of rocks are going to be and uh, it'll begin to take shape here in a second here so this is another, this is like the start of a coral and then this this huge area here is going to be just blacked out again on the, the back part here you know so these have a very weird um, kind of texture what I did is I took my pencil I made little small small light circles up and down the entire uh, shape within the you know within the shape here and I took a darker pencil and I came in and darkened the bottom but then as I as I made little circles going up I, I, I lo loosened up my uh, pressure on the paper more and more so it created like more of a blending and I didn't take a blending stump to any of these because I didn't want to blend out the texture, so I left it as is. So in the next uh, photo, you'll see that, um, oh, maybe not this one. There you go. You'll see that that I did it to all of them. So, so it gives it this nice kind of like, it looks like a bumpy texture. And, uh, and that's what you, and that's what I want. You don't want everything to look smooth, obviously, because everything has its own texture. Um, see how I darkened this area up here? And uh, I and I left a little bit here, which I went, took a blending stump in and kind of kind of wiped over. Uh, to, so basically, it just give, makes this a little bit darker. It has a hint of something in there, but you can't see it clearly because this coral and this rockery or whatever this is called is overshadowing this bit down there. And that's all I basically now, did here. I don't know how well this camera is going to pick it up, but you see, I started some stuff here. Here's a brain coral that I started here, and then I, I started trying to create my own uh, landscape. Now on. The things on, underneath this, the ocean are qu quite jagged and different and everything like that. So I, I try to make up as much uh, of landscape as possible. And here's a sea anemone I put in the corner here. Something to finish off the page a little bit. Something so, you, you know, you, you want some stuff in the foreground. You want some stuff in the background. So I put a, an anemone in the um, in the corner. So, and uh, here's the brain coral that I was doing. These are really cool. They look like a giant brain that sits on the bottom of the ocean. Really, really hysterical the first time I saw one of these. Um... And so I'm, I'm basically repeating some of the some of the uh, uh, coral that I did on the opposite side of the page. Added a little bit more of these kind of kind of shapes here, kind of make it look like it, it really is under. So I kind of shaded in a lot of the the darker areas where the light didn't hit, and then left the brighter areas where the light did hit. And then these will just create little crevices and overhangs, and you know, it just creates a very unique geometric uh, uh, shapes to to everything. Uh, good examples right here. You don't have to make little small rocks. You make like larger overhangs, larger steps, and whatnot. Uh, I made a little guy living in here. This is supposed to be like an eel that usually hangs out in the middle of uh, crevices and stuff. You know, hiding out. I guess I don't know what they do in there. Um, I put some more debris. You know, the ocean floor is not clean, so I put a lot of debris down here. You know, and I kind of blended it in with the uh, sea anemone here, right, right here. Obviously, since the anemone is so huge, that just means it's very close to the uh, viewer right now. And of course, the sea turtles in the middle ground. Everything else is fading out into the background. Uh, if you remember how large the corals were on the opposite page, the stuff over here is going to be a lot smaller because I, I wanted to give an uh, uh, impression that everything's uh, kind of kind of going away from you. So when it comes up here, so underneath the turtle's uh, uh, um, back fin and the bottom shell, I start adding some more little details here. At this point in time, I didn't really know what I was going to do with this thing. And you notice how the, this 
shape here will start transforming in the later photos here but I had little details little more rocks and again very light shading I go back in there with the darker pencil and um, and darken that all up so you can see right there and then notice how the, the shape changed I made like more jagged regions to make it look like rocks are really actually overhanging over this little start of whatever the heck this is I'm drawing right there so here uh, I just started making some more, I didn't know what I was going to do here, so I started making a little bit of weird zigzaggy shapes. Uh, I basically drew this little zigzag shape right here, then I came back in and I kind of, I did this and then I, I drew this little triangular shape here and I, um, um, and I, uh, I darkened it in. So what that does, it pops this ridge out so it makes it look like it's protruding. Same thing with this and I was, I actually kept on doing it up the page here, um, right there, see that, where I popped it out so, so you can see from this photo to this photo you all know, just make a little uh, hard line and then I just you know start drawing some other stuff inside of it here's a starfish and some more corals um, I drew a coral in the back here and uh, you know shaded it all in so so it makes it look like this overhangs overshadowing that uh, plant right there so basically what I did is uh, I, I, I repeated what I did and then this time I covered the entire ridges I left this one blank on purpose you know I wanted a little bit of clean space to kind of break up the break up the uh, the busyness of the of the overall uh, drawing so far but I went in there and I just went buck wild with a bunch of uh, corals and whatnot or everything else I, I, I think that would live down there you know of course the the turtle is being the main focus of the entire drawing here, so the, I, I had to leave that alone. Um, I started off with a really really light tone, as you can see here. See how it's like all white up here, and then it gets it's really really dark down here. I started blending up and up. Here I actually for larger spaces I couldn't use the blending stump, so what I did is I did a little crisscrossing hatch criss or cross hatching, uh, actually with my pencil. And then down here, I took a darker pencil. This is all, all H pencil, HB down here, and then a 6B for the lower edge here. So it really pops this bottom rock out or what, whatever this is. And uh, and I, I, I just, you know, uh, just really, really colored it in a little bit more. And then I took a larger, tissue. like like bathroom tissue, and I went in there, I ran it around and just, just really blended it in. And what I did is... Uh, I left I left a little I just kind of did little streaks like this so what it does is it creates looks like a light that comes from the top of the ocean and you notice how this is all nicely blended in that's all done by bathroom tissue so it's um all right so here we are with the finished product here I can't really get the whole thing in frame but uh I'll me move it down here first so you can see and you notice how graphite is really shiny here as I'm pushing down on the page don't worry I sprayed this on uh, a workable tip on here so it actually you know protects it so I can rub my fingers over these dark areas and no graphite comes off on my fingers um, so you can see all the uh, the details and it looks like the rocks are popping out at you and you know nooks and crannies within the entire thing. Um, now, now obviously let's see look the the, the graphite's really shiny. See how it just kind of mirrors off here. But if I lift the page a little bit, you can see all the details pop up. Actually, if I lift this side, you can see all the details pop up a little bit more probably. No, maybe not like that. So you can see all the details I put on there. Um, now if I move the uh, table down here. Uh, you can see how I left the rays of light coming down from the top and then I blended it out. I left a little bit of uh, a bumpy spots here to denote either some debris or maybe some smaller fish over here, you know, whatever. And uh, same thing with this side, a uh, rays of light coming down, you know, bright up here, really darker down here. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's whatever your mind can imagine. So I'm going to go and uh, maybe insert the real photo that I took, a better photo of uh, that Photoshop. Uh, onto onto this image here so you guys can take a look at what this thing really looks like but uh, I hope you guys like this video uh, I, would, I would love to draw, draw uh, do or make like real life drawing videos but you know it's really hard to draw with the camera on top of you or over your head or over your back so I decided to try this photo montage to see if you guys like this in the future I'll, I'll make some more let me know uh, until then take care thank you for watching and I will catch you guys on the next one